Good evening, one, and happy Hanukkah. Just want to share an idea that I think is meaningful from last week's parasha. Oh my God, we're doing something in a different week. Chillax, it's okay, it's still Torah. It's not like it's from like something else. Like, we should be okay with this. <clears throat> and if not, I'm sure I'm gonna get it in the fan mail. So last week we have the incident in the middle of the parasha, Parsha's Vayeshev. The incident with Yehuda and Tamar. <clears throat> Yehuda is uh, kind of slightly separated from his brothers after the whole fiasco with selling Yosef. And um, he goes about his way, he gets married, has a bunch of kids. One of those, is his eldest, is he, gets, he marries off to a woman named Tamar. Uh, that guy dies. Next son up also dies. It turns out that they messed up and they died for their own sins. But understandably, Yehuda was hesitant to have Tamar marry his third son. So he stalls her, he pushes her off. And to make a long story short, <clears throat> Tamar had the intuition that she is supposed to be connected to Yehuda's family. So she dresses up um, like a prostitute. And I rabbi say, like, how did he know that, um, what that looked like? How come he didn't recognize his daughter-in-law? Not for now. But um, they have intercourse, and Tamar uh, conceives. So after a few months, people realize that Tamar doesn't look the way she looked a couple months ago. She wasn't supposed to have been sleeping around. She, you know, needs to be, needs to be you know, held to task for it. So Tamara is taken out to, uh, to be killed for her infidelity. To Yehuda's family, he was, she was technically bound up to Yehuda's third son in a, in a Leverite uh, relationship. And she discreetly hints to him that you're the father. So there are one of two things that could happen. If we're following the, mo the model of modern American politics, Yehuda would have denied everything. He would have had a press conference explaining why he's in the right. And four months later, he would have resigned. Um, and um, but meanwhile, Tamar would be dead. Instead, Yehuda owns up to his mistake. And, she, and he says that, yes, she is correct. She's better than me. And... Yehuda then marries her. <clears throat> now, in Jewish um, rabbinic literature, as opposed to non-Jewish rabbinic literature, so in rabbinic literature, Yehuda is lauded for his honesty and for his integrity. It's not easy to own up to a mistake. It's not easy to tell people, particularly in public, I was wrong. How many politicians have we seen get up in front of the world and say, you know, I, I, I made a mistake? particularly in an election year. Imagine that. But this is one of the factors that leads to Jewish kingship being attributed to the tribe of Yehuda. Integrity, honesty, fidelity. Those are all important points that Jewish leaders need to keep in mind and all Jews need to keep in mind. The goal in life is not to make a quick buck. The, the goal in life is not to count how many people's lives you've messed over. It's to lead a life of honesty, of integrity, of trying to make the world a better place. Let's live up to Yehuda's model to focus on what's the correct decision, what's the decision that would allow us to develop our integrity. What's right? That's what's better for us. What is the objective right response? What would God want us to do? And let us develop into reliable, honest people who live life with integrity. Have a great week.